Okay, so that's team accountability. I wholeheartedly believe in both. Core competencies. Quality and safety are in our DNA. Right? It's, it's here. If we can't do it right and we can't do it safely, boy, we probably just shouldn't be doing it. So. And then a premium customer experience and reliable reliably delivering multiple customer delights. So that's a little bit on the softer side. But what does that mean? A premium customer experience. I talked before about, you know, competition. So it's it's, you know, who's your competition? Who are who's another trim carpenter out there that either we do business with or is your competitor? You know the other names of the builders and kind of <coughs> those. That's my competition. So my whole goal in life is to sell more houses than they sell and treat my customer better and provide them with a Disneyland kind of experience that they want to come and purchase from American Homes. So we're going to talk about a few more premium customer experiences and um, reliably delivering multiple customer delights. So this last one, uh, besides giving you the rules to the game, is probably one of the bigger rules to the game, and that's this personal best performance on every task, every job, every day. Personal best performance. What does personal best performance mean? Really, I think it's, if you use the word pride. If you have pride in what you just did, if you're proud of the job, if you're proud of the effort that you just produced, then that's personal best. <laughs> If, you're, if you don't have pride in what you did, then you're not, this isn't going to be a great conversation by the end of today. So what I'd like everybody to do is just take just a few moments and, and pull your eyes or whatever, but think back to the whatever your task you did yesterday. So you trimmed the house, your hardware won, scheduled things, lined people out, went and looked at work. Whatever you did yesterday, just take a few moments and think about the task that you did yesterday and think about did you do your personal best on all of the tasks that you did yesterday. So just take a few moments and think about that. So I won't ask anybody to give me their answer, but so you know you've taken a survey of your own situation from yesterday. And I don't know whether you worked on America job or you worked for Brand X, whatever. It doesn't really matter. I'd prefer to see you do personal best or everywhere you do it. That way it doesn't matter where you do it. Just do it that way. If you haven't, then I need you to do some soul searching between now and shaking my hand, looking in my eyes, and signing my paper at the end of this meeting. And if you have, great. That's exactly why we're here today, and we're, this is just a formality. And after you eat your donuts and hear me talk, we can all run away and do our thing. Anyway, the next thing I want to talk about is what we expect of you, right? So this is, you know. I think you're going to see a lot of similarities in the thing that you should expect from us. This personal perform best performance thing again. So I am talking about, you know, nailing on that little piece of base behind the master closet door, right? The same quality, the same level of detail that you know the trim around the front door. That's what personal best means every task, every day, every job. That means not getting out of your truck and walking on foot without having your heart out. That means not wearing ten shoes on the job. We'll talk about stuff like that too. That's what I mean by personal best. Every task, every day. So work safely. Okay. Uh, I'm going to have you flip one page in your packet and go to because this right here would definitely be American on bike test if I had to train read that. So we passed it out and you have it in your packet and I'm going to talk about that. So we're talking about the subject of safety here and the document that we're looking at and I hope you've all seen this before in your life is our community basic safety requirements. So item number one are all incidents and injuries need to be reported. So we're talking about anything. That's if you cut your finger or you cut your fingers off. Okay. It also says near misses. What is a near miss? Anybody have an idea what a near miss is? 
cutting a piece of wood, have it come up, get your safety glasses. That's a great example. Great example of an air mass. So, am I saying that I want to hear about those? And the answer is yes. Like, I want to hear about near misses. If you were trimming a house and let's say the roofer was working on the house, I don't know if that happens that that often, but you know, if you were if you were walking inside the house and a piece of roof tile fell, you know, beside you, that's a near miss. That's something close to happening. We call near misses practicing for the actual event, right? So if we could identify what those kind of near misses are, then we can either create procedures or processes to potentially work around them. I mean, we first of all, and some of them, you know, they're they're been coming upon us. Let's I mean, talk about the roof room. If you're the trim carpenter working inside the house and going from your truck to the house, and there's people working above you, and there's a situation where they're dropping tile right next to where you're working, like that hasn't ever happened before, right? But we're going to have a conversation here about open communication, and I just promised you open communication on that first page, right? I mean, you should be able to pick one of these team members out that works on that community and have an open, honest conversation about the situation, right? This doesn't feel right. I mean, this guy's working on the roof and pitching tiles off here in the front yard, and I'm here to tell you today, I, this is your duty to have this kind of conversation with my team. Okay? So that's what I want to get across in today's meeting. It's the open, honest communication works in both directions, and you should be able to raise your hand and say, this, this is an upset condition, right? The guy up there working on the roof, throwing tiles down here on the ground, we're on that. Can he work on the back half of the roof? Let's, let's come up with some win-win solution or scenario. So, and, and it says immediately on here. The last word is, you know, what to merit homes immediately. What is immediately? I say one hour or one day, right? If you cut your fingers off, I want to know in an hour. If you cut your finger, I want to know by the end of the day. You probably wouldn't be the first call. Well, I might not be the first one, and I wouldn't expect to, and I wouldn't want to be the first one. Right? I mean, you should definitely call emergency services, get in your scenario taken care of. And I'm not really saying necessarily why that you might be calling me, but I'm sure you'd let Mark know or Alan know, and somebody can raise that information. Mm -hmm. yeah. right. So that's what I'm really talking about. And the whole point is that we don't go more than 24 hours. And that happens, right? And that's not a good thing. So. That's what we're going to stress. The whole point of letting us know about incidents is not smacking anybody on the hand. I mean, we don't have this tally list on American Homes saying, you know, who's had an incident, you know, their own you know, shit list. We don't have that. I mean, it's really about identifying the things that go wrong and trying to, you know, put things in place to change them. And where we really make our hay, where we really make things different, as we just go out and walk around and look at things, whether they're near misses or not, or, I mean, we said a near miss is practicing for the event. Right? Well, the leading indicators before that is go out and find people that, you know, aren't wearing hard hats or don't have a fire extinguisher, or, you know, nailing stuff off without nail gun or without eye protection. If you find enough of that, right, and you fix that, then there's going to be less chance of getting a nail in your eye or, you know, having a fire that you can't put out right now those scenarios. So, anyway. Number two is 100% fall protection. So there may be some scenarios where, you know, you guys are needing to work over